Good morning, everybody. Today is June 30th of 2021, and this is part of your Encouraging Word series today, and this is called Entering Into His Rest. And one of the things prophetically the Lord keeps saying about that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. So a lot of people would get into fear or worry or being in distress or frustration because of the things that are going on around them that is shaking them. Things that are shaking in their life, things that are shaking around the world or in this nation. What does it do? It's meant what your adversary wants is for when those times of shaking occur, he wants you to get in fear, doubt, worry, and unbelief. When God is warning you of the shaking, what God intends for it to happen during that shaking is for you to be strong in him, to enter into his rest, and for you to grow exceedingly greater and rise above all these things and mature more in Christ and know who you are more in Christ. And if you have not seen that video, know who you are in Christ, go look it up. It's also on this channel. It's important to know that without him, we aren't anything, but with him, we can do all things. And that's why it's so important to know who you are and whose you are and that the greater one lives on the inside of you and the blood that was shed that you've already been ransomed you've already been paid for and you have already been guaranteed the victory and your freedom has already been paid so i want to get to a couple scriptures today and a lot of people are going through right now when during these shakings or during questionable times you may say because God is saying one thing, the prophets are saying the same things. And when, when we are getting in agreement with God, it's so awesome and so powerful if we keep our eyes focused on him. Because remember, in Amos 3, 7, God does not do anything without first revealing it to his prophets. So there are prophets speaking all over the place about all of the goodness and the things we're looking forward to, judgments that are coming against our adversaries, and victory victory for God's people. But in that meantime, while we're sitting here waiting, we have to enter into rest and trusting him despite what everything feels, looks like, and sounds like. We have to enter in. We get to, I should say, we don't have to. We have a choice to enter into his rest. And so today I want to give you at least three scriptures about entering into his rest. So when all things look so hard or horrible, or there's so much stress and frustration in your life, God is saying, even when it's all havoc and calamity all around you, and there's so much pressure for you to give up and quit, he gives you the opportunity. Now we can take it or not. That is up to us. Remember, he set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. We're the ones who choose. So he's giving us a choice to enter into his rest or what? To trust him. He will give us the ability to enter into that rest. It's not our ability, it's his. So he gives us his word in order for us to what? Knowing the truth, it sets you free. So one of the first um, scriptures that I want to get to today is turn to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. I had another scripture open that I was going to give first, but I'm going to wait for that one. And uh, so go to Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. And the reason why I'm saying for you guys to go to it too is because it's really important for you to see it as well. I don't want you just to hear it. I want you to see the scripture for yourself as well. So Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. I will cause you to rest. Now look. I will cease or I will ease, relieve, and refresh your souls. I want to read that part again. This is the amplified version of it. I will cease, relieve, and refresh your souls. So what, what happens when you are in great adversity, 
You need that time of rest. You need that time of relief. What? So he can refresh your soul. So he can build you back up again. Remember our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And that's what your adversary will target on you almost every single day of your life. Your mind, your will, your emotions. Because we're we're a three-part body. A spirit, a soul, and a body. And so your spirit is the one who should be leading you. What? It's the Holy Spirit within you. He should be leading and guiding you in the right directions and where you should go. But a lot of times our soul, our mind, our will, and emotions, it gets clogged there. And then when we want to say God's word and power and force, it's that mind that will put that doubt, that unbelief, or that fear that what you're saying isn't going to come to pass. What you're saying has no power. No, it's God's ability. It's God's power. It's his words. His words are spirit and their life. John 16 or John 6, 63. So he says, come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden. I can tell you, I think most people in this world right now are heavy laden and burdened down. With all the stresses and all the cares, there are so many people right now on anxiety medicines, on things for stress and depression, and things just to help them ease on each and every day because there's so much going on in the world right now. What? To get you focused on your adversary and everything that he's doing and all of his power and all the evil in this world. That's what your adversary wants you to do. He wants you to focus on all the evil. He wants you to focus on the impossibilities. He wants you to focus on um, hopelessness. And God is saying just the opposite. He's the one who gives us hope. He's the one who gives us peace. He's the one who said he is going to make you arise. He will give you rest even in the midst of a storm. Remember, Jesus was able to what? Speak to that storm and the storm had to what? Listen. God has given us the comforter. The Holy One is on the inside of us. And when we can speak to a storm, we can speak to that mountain. Remember in Mark 11, chapter 11. We can speak to that mountain and it shall be removed. Why? It's not our um, power. It's God within us. It's just agreeing with what God is saying. It's what He says to us. It's what He says we can do. It's not our own ability. No, he says we can do all things, what? Through Christ. It's Christ's ability. It's what Christ has done for us already. All right. Now, this is Mark 11, 29. Take my yoke upon you and lean on and learn of me. Learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, refreshment, and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls. So what do we do? We find our rest in Jesus. Trusting in Jesus of what he has already done for us. And then he goes on to say, verse 30, For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh or hard, sharp or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, pleasant, and my burden is light. And is easy to be home. So Jesus has already defeated your adversary. He has already bore every sickness and disease. He has already destroyed that fear and that doubt and that worry and unbelief. He's already done it all. And if we just trust and rely on him each and every day, that's what he's saying. My yoke is easy. If you come to him, Your days will be easy because you can enter into his rest even when there's chaos all around you. You could be in the midst of one of your greatest storms, but remember, remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in that fire. They were in it. And who showed up? Jesus showed up. Jesus is showing up in your fire. He's showing up in that test and trial. He's showing up in that storm. He's showing up. That's what he's promised he said he would do. He will always cause you, not sometimes and not every once in a while, and not, it may be, you know, it may be here, there's whatever, it's sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. No, he always, he always say, God always causes me to triumph. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, no matter what I hear, God always causes me to triumph. 
All right. Now go to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 and verse 1. Hebrews 4 and verse 1 says, Therefore, while the promise of entering in or entering his rest still holds and is offered today. Remember, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he had offered it before, he's offering it now. Because he also says in his word, he's no respecter of persons. So if you need rest today, and if you need that deliverance today from all those hardships and all that test and all that trial and all that fire that you've been dealing with, Jesus saying is you can have that rest today. It's offered to you. Okay. His rest still holds and is offered today. Let us be afraid to be to just trust it, lest any of you should think he has come too late and come short of reaching it. You've never come too late and you've never come too short. Don't fear it. Don't fear that you can't enter into his rest. Don't fear it because that's how Satan steals. He steals, kills, and destroys, John 10.10. 10. He does it what? By moving in and stealing the word out of you. It's the first thing he's going to do. He's going to steal the word. Why? Because the truth is what sets you free. If he can steal the truth out of your heart, he can steal the joy, which is joy, is your strength. And what comes along with that is peace. Now, jump down to verse 3. For we who have believed adhered to and trusted and relied on God to enter that rest in accordance with his declaration that those who did not believe should not enter when he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. But he said, although his works had been completed and prepared and waiting for all who had believed from the foundation of the world. So what is he saying? Enter into his rest. It is a free gift. It's a gift that has already been paid for. It's a price that Jesus has already paid for you to be able to enter into his rest. So I'm going to pray with you guys today, obviously, I always do before I close, that we're going to be able to enter in to a new level of rest in Christ Jesus. No matter what our shortcomings have been seeming like, no matter what your mind is telling you, no matter what your circumstances are telling you today, no matter what your body is telling you today, you can enter into his rest because Jesus, remember, paid the ultimate sacrifice for this peace, for this freedom, and for this rest. And what do we do? Father God, help me trust, rely completely on you. I give you the control. That's the one thing that people have a hard time dealing with is giving God the control and saying, Lord, I don't want it anymore. I give it to you. And that has been something that in the past I had a really hard time doing. It's because I'm just that person that I just want to help. I just want to help. I just want to help. And God is saying, I don't need your help. I just need you to trust me. How many of us is he saying that to us right now? I don't need your help to figure this out. I don't need you to worry and to have those cares and to have those worries and that pressure on you. No. He said his burden is light. His yoke is light. And he takes away the burdens. So we are not supposed to be weighed down with all these things that go on in life. We're supposed to cast those cares, remember, upon him because he cares for us affectionately and he watches over us and remember if he cares about us he watches over us he hears our cries he promises to deliver he's the most high god there's nothing impossible for him we should never have our heads hung down a day in our life if we just keep those things in the front of our hearts in front of our minds and in the midst of our hearts saying my dad is the Holy One of Israel. My dad is the, the dad. He's the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the great I am. 
He's the God whom nothing is impossible. And then when all these hope seems lost and all those impossible, se- those impossible looking situations in your life, you can just say, my dad is bigger. My dad is the one who is in control and he's got this and he's got me in the palm of his hands and he's guaranteed me victory. So then look, look at that all of a sudden something that seems deemed so impossible and so heartaching and so ridiculous, you can sit there and say, God, thank you. I give it to you. I thank you with you. You have it. I don't have to and I'm free from it. And then you can just sit there and enter into his rest and wait until he, the God of the breakthroughs, shows up and he will every time. Especially if we give all those cares to him and we trust him and his ability and not our own. Because remember, when we do it ourselves, we get Ishmael's. When we trust in God, we get Isaac's. So, and that's what we want. So anyway, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I just lift up every person at the sound of my voice, Father God. I thank you that there's no distance in the spiritual realm. In this glory, in this anointing, Father God, that is in this room this very day, I thank you that it touches them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And every person, that Father God, that has been weighed down, that's had a burden, Father God, on their lives and all these tests and all these trials that has weighed them down in their soul. We are thanking you, Father God, that they are free right now, that those chains are broken in Jesus' name and that your people are entering into your rest. Show them, Father God, clarity of who you are. We thank you that who was hopeless is now full of hope. The ones who had no joy are full of joy. The ones who had no peace have peace. And Father God, I am in agreement with them right now to have peace, to have joy, to have that strength, to have those burdens be broken off of their lives, Father God, and that they're able to enter into your rest because they're seeing every adversity, every plot, every evil plan of their adversary. They're seeing it through your eyes and not their own. They're casting those cares onto you right now, Father God. We thank you that the ones who are having difficulty giving over that control, giving over those pressures and cares, Father God, you help them right now where they are to be able to see that you have bigger hands and your hands are more capable than ours. And we thank you right now for those breakthroughs and those testimonies. I am in agreement with Father God, with every single person that is watching this right now. And I want to praise you and I want to thank you, Father God, that we have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Most High God, you are our dad. Thank you for showing yourself so strong on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I hope this encouraged you today. And like always, I hope you like, subscribe, and share because it helps get the reach out with those likes and those shares to reach more people. Because right now, In the world we're living in, one of the most important things that we can hold on to is the Word of God and trusting in Him in the midst of all of these battles and storms. So, God bless each and every one of you and have a wonderful day.